Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics. After World War II and the presidency of FDR, a known conservationist, the general public became increasingly aware of environmental impacts. Aldo Leopold's A Sand County Almanac, published in 1949, is exemplary of this time and its surrounding thoughts. In the 1960s and 70s, the environmental movement picked up further. The Clean Air Act was established in 1970 along with the National Environmental Policy Act, establishing the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Council on Environmental Quality. In the following decade, legislation such as the Water Pollution Control Act, the Marine Protection Research and Sanctuaries Act, the Endangered Species Act, the Safe Drinking Water Act, the Clean Water Act, and the Superfund Act were established. With these great changes in environmental focus in the public eye and legislation came the creation of Leave No Trace. Park visitations increased with the creation of more modern camp equipment and greater awareness of outdoor recreation. In an attempt to leave natural areas as natural as possible, the U.S. Forest Service, the Bureau of Land Management, and the National Park Service started to educate their visitors on enjoying the outdoors with minimal impact on it. Their combined efforts eventually led to an educational pamphlet created by these three organizations cooperatively called Leave No Trace Land Ethics. That was in 1987. Three years after that, in 1990, the Leave No Trace Education Program was established by the U.S. Forest Service and the National Outdoor Leadership School, also known as Knowles. They were joined by the Bureau of Land Management, the National Park Service, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in following few years. Since then, they have been joined by organizations such as the Boy Scouts of America, universities, small businesses, the American Camp Association, and more, as well as established four international branches and dozens of international partners. The Leave No Trace mission statement reads as follows. The Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics teaches people how to enjoy the outdoors responsibly. The Leave No Trace vision reads as follows. As a leading educator of outdoor ethics, the Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics will grow a nation of outdoor advocates to put the Leave No Trace principles into action. Their current strategies are to involve local community, educate youth, and involve front country outreach. The Leave No Trace Seven Principles advise as follows. Principle number one, plan ahead and prepare. Know the area's rules and regulations. Prepare for emergencies. Go when it's not so busy. Go in small groups. Repackage food into coolers and Tupperware and use a map and compass rather than painting areas in a way of leaving breadcrumbs. Planning ahead not only helps you have a more relaxed and enjoyable experience, but it also makes for easier cleanup, safer fun, and a lower impact on the environment. Principle number two, travel and camp on durable surfaces. Use established trails and campsites, camp at least 200 feet from lakes and streams, and in pristine areas, be gentle. Traveling this way protects the natural environment and prevents erosion and other wear and tear on the environment. Principle number three, dispose of waste properly. Pack it in, pack it out. If you bring things with you, make sure that you bring them out with you as well. Dispose of human waste in cat holes six to eight inches deep, 200 feet away from water, campsites, and trails. Wash yourself and your dishes 200 feet away from water with biodegradable soap. When you're finished with your dishes, scatter the strained dish water. Disposing of waste properly not only helps create minimal impact, but keeps campsites clean so future campers like yourself can enjoy it just as much as you did. Principle number four, leave what you find. Preserve the past by looking, but not touching, natural historical artifacts. Leave rocks and plants as they are. Avoid introducing and transporting non-native species, and do not build structures or furniture. Other people and animals appreciate that environment just as much as you do. 
so don't alter it so they can stay beautiful and healthy for all to enjoy. Principle number five, minimize campfire impacts. Use a lightweight stove or candle lantern when possible. Use established fire rings, fire pans, or mound fires. Be sure to keep fires small. Use sticks from the ground rather than taking them from the trees. Burn all wood to coal and ash. Put out campfires completely. Scatter the ashes as you leave your campsite. Unattended or neglected fires, even after use, can be detrimental to any environment. Be sure to care for yours for the sake of their areas and for future campers. Principle number six, respect wildlife. Observe from a distance, do not approach or follow. Never feed animals. They can alter their health and their natural behavior. Store food and trash securely. Control pets or don't bring them. Avoid wildlife during mating, nesting, raising young, and winter. Animals are going about their business just as you are yours. You are on their turf and must act accordingly with respect and appreciation. Principle number seven, be considerate of other visitors. Respect and be courteous to others. Yield to others on trails. Step downhill of a trail for pack stock. Be sure to take breaks. Camp away from other trails and visitors. Avoid loud voices and noises. And appreciate the sounds of nature. Other visitors are here just as you are, to embrace nature. Treat them as you would want to be treated, with respect and gratitude. All right, let's recap all of that. Do follow rules. Do know the risks. Do bring a first aid kit. Do use a map. Do follow trails. Do be kind to fragile areas. Do mind the water. Do mind your step. Do appreciate the historical value. Do take out what you've brought in. Do avoid putting chemicals into the environment. Do respect the animals. Do keep your pets under control. Do mind other visitors. Do watch your fires, do put fires all the way out, and do have fun. Don't spontaneously decide to go camping without a plan. Don't break rules. Don't hurt yourself or others. Don't wander aimlessly. Don't attack nature. Don't camp in the stream. Don't stampede on plants. Don't destroy history. Don't leave your garbage behind. Don't dump chemicals. Don't feed the animals. Don't let your dog go crazy. Don't sing, shout, and let it all out. Don't leave the fire unattended, and don't have too much fun. Okay, that last part was a joke. You can have too much fun if you'd like to. These principles may seem irrelevant in an urban setting such as Minneapolis. But the underlying theme of showing respect for all places, people, and things is applicable anywhere and everywhere. Certain specificities, such as where to place human waste, may not be quite so relevant in these settings. But treating animals, humans, and our earth with the same kindness and love is completely transferable. Helping people understand these things is important because these values better us as a society, while at the same time helping to protect, maintain, and appreciate our environment and the beauty of nature. Although, although Leopold once said, we abuse land because we see it as a commodity belonging to us, when we see land as a community to which we belong, we may begin to use it with love and respect. Let's move towards that community and love and respect the land in a way that would make Aldo Leopold proud and embrace the seven leave no trace principles. By doing our part, generations to come may appreciate the land in similar ways, and natural ecosystems may continue to flourish in ways that support us, support them, and support greater beauty in the world. Be kind to nature. Leave no trace.